Dearest Abigail, I write to you with great longing, and also because I lost your phone number. You see, I recently purchased a new phone and regretfully tried to transfer my data from my old phone myself. The horrors. Photos, notes, your number, all gone in a confusing flash. Why, oh why did I not use AT&T right to you? I could have bought online and an expert would have brought me my new phone and helped me transfer my data for free. I could be texting you hilarious gifts at this very moment, for AT&T right to you can deliver as soon as today. Instead, I have delivered unto myself only misery. Also, I lost your mailing address and the data transfer, so I'm not sure why I'm even writing a letter. It's not complicated. Personal delivery, expert setup, all free, as soon as today, with AT&T right to you. Same-day delivery is subject to availability. Select areas only. Service provided by AT&T or an authorized provider. Visit att.com slash right to you for details and availability. So where do you pod, Charles? Uh, where do you get your podcast? Uh... I go to the potty, and that's about it. Okay. All right, we got the uh, first show of October. They call this uh, fourth quarter. That's yeah. Corporate talk, Mr. Wendy. Yeah. I, I In 81, it. he was 21. He called the water his own. All right, look, man, we're getting ready to go. Throw the bow lines off first. Fishing. Because I am the goddamn captain of this boat. Drinking. We can't forget about smoking. Thinking about how crazy this life feels. And because, you know, what about getting high and getting drunk? Running on empty. Some kind of goddamn podcast or something. With Mr. Windy. I mean, the bed's oh. playing. You're on. Oh, well, well, I was already talking. You potted me down. So, you know, I'm over here watching Yandel. Hey, pop me down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yandel's over here showing me stuff that I can't see. Welcome to the big show here. It's Mr. Wendy, first show of the fall season here, um, if you could call it that here in Southern Florida. Fiscal year 2021. Yeah, Mr. Wendy's ready to rock. Hey, especially with what happened last night. What happened? We got problems. What do we you mean? don't. We don't. Over in the trailer park? No, no, no. Over there in the White House. Oh, yeah. Oh, big biscuits. They got problems in the White House. Sounds like COVID-19. And, and maybe all over uh, the, the House of Representatives and everything, because his uh, chief of staff was visiting with him and visiting with all them, too. Well, they got a good chance to live. Seems like the odds are in their favor. So How is that? How is that? When you're well, old, I think you got like a 2 or 3% chance of dying from it, so they got a 97% not, chance no, to live. No. But that's a strike against you for being fat. Right. So there goes your three just went up. Melania's and, not fat. She's well, got a well, tight ass. Uh, I'm sure people hope that she makes it. She'll probably be fine. Yeah, she'll probably be fine. Yeah, but he's overweight. And she's female. That's a good sign. He's overweight and he's old. More men die. Don't, yeah, the more that that gets him. And uh, he's lucky that you know he's gonna he's gonna drink bleach. He's gonna he's gonna be fine. Yeah. You, well, he'll drink a quarter tank of bleach and he'll know, be ready to rock. Don't forget now, I don't know what time it is, but we're running late. On empty. What are we running late from? Supposed to be calling that other show. Oh, yeah. It is six minutes before the top of the hour. That's right. Mr. Wendy is a legend in Michigan. Therefore, he needs to check in with his his fans. That's right, fans. Uh He's got none down here, but uh, he's got lots of them in Michigan. The ones I did have, they're dead, so no no good. You got a lot of fans, Mr. Wendy. I'm just joshing with you. What's What's the number? 231-941-9558. 231-941-9558. There's no reason to lie and say we'll go back and cut that out later. No, they don't care. People, they don't care if people call them. Yeah. Uh, where I, are we calling, Mr. Wendy? Calling I'm lit. Good morning, KL- Good morning, KLT. Howdy, man. You're on my show. Oh, wow. Hey, Wendy. What's going on, man? Uh, hey, I, I, I have to be careful. I can be careful because uh, yours is a family show, and mine is more like around, lined around like porno stuff on my show. So we can't. I, and Gentry is the worst. I'm not bad as Gentry is. So he's sitting right over there, and he has a very unique talent to provoke me into using dirty language. So I have to remind him that your <laughs> show is not one of them kind of shows. So I, I I hope you got some cuss button left. What's up, O man? I'm wondering if you'd like me to ship something north for you for the winter. <laughs> no, thank you. Hey. No, no, no. That was a one way ticket we gave him. Yay. <laughs> Are you sure you guys don't want him back? Because I'll be happy to box him up and uh, we'll put a bow on him and send him right back. 
I think he's a wanted man. He's in Michigan. wanted up here. Yeah, he can't oh, come back. You didn't tell me about this, Mister Wendy. What, right. What's going on in that town? In that town. Right. What, what do you? What did you do wrong, Charles? I told somebody who spit on me that she must not want to live very long, and she pressed charges on me for uh, assault. Threatening That's, words and gestures. Yeah. Well, she spit then, on me. But. And then Mr. Wendy was supposed to go and clear things up in the court, then he missed his court date. Yeah. And, yeah. And that kind, was, kind of like he was late for his own show this morning. And on the hey, I, I, <laughs> hey, hey, it wasn't my fault that I missed the court date, and it ain't my fault that I was oh, late for the show. it never is your fault, and Mr. Wendy. That's right. Never. And, uh, no, no, that's a true story. I'm not going to sit here and say something's my fault when, when it's will, not. When will you take blame for what you do? When I'm to blame. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll take the blame when I'm to blame. Well, how did you? How, how is it somebody else's fault you missed a court date? Uh, because I was somewhere else. You're pointing at me. How could I possibly be responsible no, for you missing a court date I thought, in Michigan? I thought you were going to say, how can I possibly not be responsible for being late to this show? And that's because Yandel made a wrong turn. We didn't go out on 75. We had to run all the way through town. That because you're fault. scared to drive on the interstate in my yeah, truck. Yeah, because his front tires are going to fall off. He told me that, that we had to be careful. His tires might fall off his truck. I said, I'm not riding in this truck anymore. He said, well, you've already ridden down 70. And I said, I'm not again. You have a guest on the phone. Oh, hey, what's going on, Omelette? What are you up to? <laughs> Mr. Wendy was getting drunk in Grand Rapids, and of course he doesn't drive, and he had a court date on Monday morning in Traverse City, and he didn't make it. Mm. Well, I got on a ride with old trucker Paul, and we happened to head south instead of north uh, accidentally. <laughs> yeah, Ohio. Well, yeah. So uh, if Mr. Wendy comes, he's going to be laying low. No, I just got to stay out of Grand Traverse County. Uh, they knew where they knew where I was at when I was in Mancelona, but that's uh, more than I think. That warrant is like a fifty mile warrant. If it's more than fifty miles, uh, they, they can... mile warrant. No, they <laughs> have them. They have them. The one when I was down in Grand Rapids. That's why they wouldn't come and get me because it was more than a hundred miles away. One hundred and two. So, I want to know, who's, know who's, play, who's paying Mr. Wendy's freight at the trailer park. Uh, I've been trying to help out Mr. Wendy. He's got his new podcast here, so we've we've got a new sponsor. We'd like to thank uh, Jay Farner from Rocket Mortgage. You know, get a mortgage today, low interest rates. Uh, uh, hopefully, they'll pass extra as we're now on KLT. I'm not, I'm but uh, Charles, Mr. Wendy Shaw is uh, he, he's running his own show down here. You know, well, pe- people love Mr. Wendy. Wait a minute now, people. Mr. Wendy plural? called us yesterday and asked us to listen to the podcast because he can't he doesn't know how to listen to his own podcast i didn't say i didn't know how to listen to it wait a minute i'm talking yeah you're lying he said check for advertisers because i think they're ripping me off (laughs) what how am i ripping you off do you want to go back to the campground and be homeless i i (laughs) said hey i sent rick Coates a text this morning saying do not say that and sure enough there you go you should have sent it to me. That's the old man. Well, I didn't know you said Yeah, you told me you don't bring your phone into work. It stays out in your truck. First of all, this show has lost us about $15,000 already. <laughs> and, and that ain't in my chargebacks. Fault. No, that ain't Because my... every time we get somebody to sponsor hey. the show, you somehow badmouth them. Yeah, because you should have told me that my uh, the one who says, just like you had problems sleeping as a sponsor, I hate that commercial. And so you don't tell me they're a sponsor, and then you ask me what I think about them. If it's a commercial, it's a sponsor. Hey, listen, Gentry's living in a mansion on my podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm losing and, money. And, thanks, and, I can't pay for the guy to cut my grass anymore. Thanks yeah, to you, asshole. Yeah, but he, don't talk like that. You can't talk oh, like that. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Hey, just, go, guys. Yeah, I figured he just run off some uh, more. All right, see you, man. Yep, just, that's how you, they do it over you, on you, FM. Yeah, we just we just kind of took over their show there for a moment. No, he just hit the dump button to dump out your. Oh, because I said asshole. Yeah, you can't you can't barely say ass. You can't cuss on that station. No, it's a family show. Like I told you, they got mothers, soccer moms, and children. Everybody listening to KLT. You know, because they're like Ellen DeGeneres. They're always giving stuff away and buying your people to listen so they get number one in the ratings. Well, what I'm concerned about is that you're running your mouth to, to them that you're not making enough money down here. I'm living in a mansion. That's why I was telling you outside that we're not going to talk about my money. That when they ask about the money, we're going to say that you, whenever I need it, you, I can lean on you, or I can go out to the shrimp boats and work on the shrimp boat docks. So then what happens? We start talking about my money. 
What's the latest on your shrimping money that you're supposed to be getting? They won't. What about the one the shrimp that went to Texas and then they Nobody went to- has ever heard from them again. Well, what's their number? Let's call them. You mean like the a, ship went down? No, no. This is a coronavirus. They all tied the boat up and everybody went home. Well, what's the name of the company? Let's call them out because uh, we're not pussies here on this show. We what's cuss. the name of the boat? What's, who are these the son of a of, bitches? The name of the boat is the Sea Witch. The Sea Witch. Sea Witch. I'm going to su- search the old Sea Witch. Uh, and, and what's the name of the company? It's, no, I'm not calling them right now. Well, if they now. owe you money, let's get your damn money. I'm they tired already, of paying they, the freight. Hey, hey, they already had a chance to pay me. And what, they, what they did pay and? me was not what they owed me. So what? So let's There's call them up. And what they owed me. So you settled. Well, they, this is, th- according to them. Okay, not according to you. So they right, did they give still, you money now. They now gave me you're money, crawfishing. but not all my money. They had to wait till they unload the shrimp. That's why I've never heard from them again. You think they that shrimp money? went bad? Yes. Yes. And they dumped because, it out for the fish be, to eat? Because there was a chance that it was going bad when we went in. And I, that's why I wanted all my money unload the shrimp. Nope, they're taking the shrimp to Texas. Well, if the freezer goes out again, them shrimp are going to go bad. That's why they're not calling me back. They have my number. They used to call me. They don't call anymore. Well, what's their number? We can call them and find out where your money is. Let's do something else. I thought we're trying to get some money. Don't you have a rent's due today, right? Friday? They already had the opportunity to pay me, so it's just going to wind up being something that makes my blood boil. They've already done it once. They're just going to do it again. I don't need my blood to be boiling this early in the morning. That's why people drink. Are you drinking already this morning? It is 9 9 a.m. on the east coast of the United States. What are you drinking, Charles? Mango punch. (laughs) Let Let me get my hands on it. I don't care. Let me have a sip of it, and I'll no, tell you. You're not putting your lips on my drink. Let me see if it's got two sides. Give me we a, have straws. Give me a cup. I'll pour some in it. The love boat. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a cup in here, but I can tell you that there's booze in that thing because you'll start shaking in the morning if you don't get a little booze in no, the veins. No, I don't shake. You don't? I was in a... Well, because you always put alcohol in hey. your system at 9 a.m. Hey. right when you wake up. hey. I was in one of them places. They had me do that when I was up in Traverse City. You know, go live in one of them places where they cure you of drinking. How'd that go? I, I heard you got sober for a while. Well, that was a different issue. But when I was at this place. <laughs> that was a different issue. Well, because when I was at this place right here, they they check you in the morning. and check, check They want to see your hands. And uh, the people in front of me, they're shaking like leaves. And I'm like, what the? What's wrong with them, you know? They got to give them medicine. Withdrawal, they call yeah, that. Yeah. They got to give them medicine. Every time I go shrimping. I, I withdraw because you can't drink. There is no drinks. You're out there. There's no drinks. So I you, thought there was beer. Yeah, you said you... No, the, you, you can trade. If a boat comes up, you can trade your trash for beer. And you get lucky and you have to wait till one of them boats comes up when you're down in the Keys. I thought you said they had like a sniff of uh, some, some whiskey out there last time you went. Yeah, the one rig man. No, I, actually, I'm the one that brought the whiskey, but he found out about it. So, so there is like, drinking on the boat. You can sneak people, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it went from you stay sober on the boat to now there's whiskey I didn't and there's say beer. You stay it's sober. A sniff. It's I a said sniff. no, I didn't say you stay sober. I said you withdraw because when you leave you may have a case of beer, but when it's gone, it's gone. And how did it how does it feel to you when you're withdrawing on that shrimp boat? What do you feel like? Having another beer? That's what you really but but if you can't, that's that's how it's a good way to quit drinking. You think about it, but if you can't then you stop. Yeah, there's no about. stores out there when, right. when you're 25, 30 right. miles that's off right. the coast. That's right. That's, that's right. How far do you go out, by the way? About 40 miles. But some people are right there offshore, nine miles, the crab line. But that's small shrimp. But some people like to catch more small shrimp than less big shrimp. So, yeah. Well, I want you to know we're building this show, Mr. Wendy. Uh, I know that I have a nice house with a fenced-in yard and, you know, two cars. You know, I was more or less joking with them. Living the dream. That, and you're in the trailer park, and, but... I didn't make the same mistakes in my life that it seems as though that you've made. But I will say, yeah, Mr. Wendy, wait you seem to be pretty happy in life where you're at. Yeah, because I intend to live to be 125 years old, so I got a long ways to go. You should buy a place. You know? Uh, yeah, and grow avocado trees and all the, all the stuff that I like growing. Well, is- what other kind of work are you uh, are you into that uh, you've been stacking all this cash? Because everybody seems to be concerned how Mr. Wendy's got that big fat belly and how you're living the dream. I'm not living a dream, and I only got a big fat belly because I need to quit eating stuff that's white. I've already been told that. No more tortillas, no more rice. White food matters. It's starch, and it not makes you Charles. fat. <laughs> white, white food doesn't matter to you, Charles? Not anymore. 
No, it's making me fat. It does. It does matter. Yes, white food matters. It's making me fat. Yes, there's no question about it. So, did, did you? And I just did it again last night. I had tuna casserole. Guess what's in that pasta? Guess what that is? White food. It's more sugar. Pasta turns into sugar. Sugar turns into fat. Seems like well everything eaten. white seems to be the problem nowadays. It is. It is. And the potatoes that you love. Yep, they're the worst. The, uh, all the time, I was buying them ten pounds at a time. Boiled I, eggs. And they're the worst. And I was eating, boiling them a dozen at a time. Want a snack? Eat a potato. Want another snack? Eat a hard-boiled egg. There's some fat coming right there. Yeah, so once I learned that, but God, but like last night, what am I going to eat? I'm tired of eating chicken. Uh, it's too far to walk to get pork chops. What did you have for dinner? Tuna casserole, because they got tuna over there at the family what do you put? What do you put in that there tuna casserole? Can Mr. of tuna and a box of tuna casserole. No, macaroni and cheese, but I like to use Velveeta because it's better macaroni and cheese. And then, and you use extra cheese, and then you put it in the oven, and you, some people cover it with... Uh, I mean, go through the process of you in the trailer park. Okay. I know you don't have a ton of utensils. I mean, how do you put this casserole together? Okay, I have the steamer. Yandel has seen my steamer. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's what I boil the pasta in. Okay, so add- you start with the macaroni. Right. Okay. And then you uh, add the cheese. All right. And then you add the, uh, on top of everything, in a casserole dish, you put on either, some people put breadcrumbs, some people put uh, uh, the onion rings, the fried onion ring things, what you put on a green bean casserole. Yep, yep. You put that on there. And then when I want to melt all that stuff, the only place I got to put for something to go in, I got two burners, but I have to put it out on my barbecue pit. How long? How long does it stay out there for? How long is the cooking time on that? I'd say about a half hour. Thirty minutes. Yeah, because the pasta's already cooked. All I'm doing is heating up the tuna and melting more cheese. So then and you then take the crisp- tuna in and you just mix it all together. No, you dish it out on your plate and start eating. It's already mixed. The tuna goes in the macaroni and the cheese goes in there too. Then you dump. You said it out- you took the tuna to the grill. I took the casserole to the grill. The tuna is in the casserole. You know, like a casserole dish. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, a square casserole dish. Barely fits in my uh, barbecue Put any pit. butter in that, uh, in that no, dish I so it doesn't eat, stick? I can't eat butter. I put extra. No, it does stick. It's a real pain in the ass to clean that dish. That's why you got to put a little butter at the bottom. I can't be doing that. I might as well eat something that's white. What about that I can't believe it's not butter? That's worse. It is worse. Yeah, that is worse. But it's not butter. Right. It's lard. That's worse. That's cholesterol. I cook with lard. Yeah, well, good for you. <laughs> you, you got, I have a new pan that you don't need to put anything in. It's copper. Wow. I got a copper frying pan. Uh, I, I like that pan. I use no it No Pam for, spray, no butter right. pad. Yeah, not even for eggs. You put eggs in there, they slide right out. Yeah, hard, copper. Hard to scratch. So tuna roll, ca- tuna casserole. The, yeah. uh, this show is bringing everything to the fans. You now have Mr. Wendy's tuna casserole that you and your family could sit around mealtime and enjoy with the family. Well, now, the tuna, was that canned? Yeah, yeah. I'm not getting the stuff in a pouch. I'm Albacore. not getting it fresh. Uh, no, just regular old crap tuna. How many cans? Three. Three cans Ooh. mixed with how I much? extra tuna to try to fight off some of how the How much noodles. macaroni? How about those cats? They Three go boxes. crazy. Three boxes of macaroni. Right. I, make, I like to make stuff where I don't got to cook again. I can just microwave it. So I always make way too much. So that way, like today, all I got to do is go in there and throw something on the plate and throw it in the microwave, and I don't got to cook again. This recipe brought to you by the Family Dollar in North Fort Myers, located at Merchant's Crossing. Right underneath <laughs> the water tower. <laughs> it is right underneath the water tower. Oh, nice. So did you watch the presidential uh, debates, uh, Mr. Wendy? Did, did you happen to tune into that? I did. I did. What man. did you think of President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden and them debating it out in the first debate live from Cleveland. Trump, <clears throat> Trump, okay, Trump acted like me. <laughs> well, because I'm sitting here drinking it. Chicken, chicken, Trump. Um, you, do you need to hit the vaporizer? Not that green one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because Did you leave last week thing, seeing things? That thing tends to cause my mind to wander. Here. You got it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to tease you with it. I'll, I'll hit it later. Okay. Because it makes it where you can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured before you broke down the presidential debate, it might make it more interesting. Okay, in that case, I'll do it then. All right, you, okay. All right here, give it a try. Okay. There you this go. Because I really want to hear you break down the presidential debate that happened just a few nights ago. It was the first one. I actually thought that they both 
looked like a couple of, like I was watching Grumpier Old Men. You know that movie where the old men go out fishing and they just I thought bicker just at the each opposite, other? And I like the meme about the babies. What, what did you, oh, you, what did you think? Like a couple of babies. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, they were either <laughs> acting like babies or they were acting like grumpy old men. I'm telling you, I've been to middle school debates recently and they were, uh, it was beautiful, entertaining, More compelling. respectful. Like yeah. Hey. Okay, what? so now Mr. Wendy is primed off of uh, no, medical, not, the medical grade. No, I can barely grade. see, man. That thing almost killed me. I can barely <laughs> see. How you feeling now, Mr. Wendy? Why like don't you, I'm drowning. Why don't you break down the presidential debates? What did you take from it in all seriousness? I think Trump's a punk. I really do. In the debate, he, he started every fight that there was on there. He interrupted him. He acted more like when I was on the high school debate team. That's the way I acted. Whoa, you were on the high school debate team? Let me tell you. Didn't I tell you about that already? No. What did you debate? Do you remember yes, the, the, the subject? The big one was Roe v. Wade. That okay. Was about, that, was, that was when I was what, in high school. What was your side on the debate? Uh, a woman's right to choose. And I won that. You're for baby killing? Is that what you said? No, a woman's right. To, it's her body. So okay. you're pro-abortion. Long abortion. Long, pro abortion. Well, you like to kill babies is what you're no, saying. No, as long as both parents agree to it. It's when the one doesn't agree and a wife is just going to kill the baby. That's where I don't. What about late-term abortion? Uh, uh, it's up to them. You know, no one's going to tell. Uh, what if somebody came and told you what to do with your body? What do you tell them? That's my, that's my body. What are you talking about? But anyway, I, I'm with you, Mr. Wendy. I think women should have the right to choose. I, d- I just think that it, uh, you know, there's a certain time limit. Guess what? When the baby starts having little baby fingers and little baby toes and things hey, like that, that's yeah. your time. I, I don't want to see it get sucked out. Now, the guy on the other side who is a school bully, he he got pissed off and he wanted to change uh, change sides. He didn't like what I threw at him about the right to choose. So he wanted to take my argument. And I can go on that side of the table and take his. So then he goes and throwing the same stuff at me that I threw at him. And I had an answer for that back to him all the way till he got pissed off and he stood up and he threw the whole table up in the air. He walks out the door and he turns to me and says, you know what, man, for just running, you're just using your mouth. You sure put up a good fight. He said, I'm out of here. (laughs) That's what he told me. For just using your mouth, you sure put up a good fight. And he walked out. He said, you got an answer for everything. I can't take it. And he walked out. So I won both sides. So you really earned that name, Mr. Wendy. Probably, what grade were you in? Back then, about uh, tenth grade. Tenth grade, you yeah. you just would never shut up, and it just that's uh, why the teachers call me Motor Mouth. That's and what, what did you want to be when you grew up? At about tenth grade, uh, I was supposed to be a lawyer. I was going to make a damn. You were supposed good... to be? Yeah. Where did it all go wrong? When I got tired of school teachers and I decided that I didn't want to go to more school, you can't wait to graduate high school to get away from them, not go do four more years of them. Which is only the beginning if you're going to be a lawyer. Right, And so I was like, well, I ain't going to be a lawyer. Uh, I want to shoot people. So that's why I joined the Air Force and got into a a part of it where there's an opportunity for you to shoot people, but the chances of you being shot at are not very good. How many people did you shoot? So are you I saying never shot anybody? Confirm so, kills? No, nah, I never shot. Are anybody. you saying the Air Force ruined you? Because I mean, it seemed like you could have taken the path of being a lawyer, being very respected. I should make, have joined the your Navy. Mother. I should have joined the Navy. You think it was the Air Force that screwed you? Yeah, well, I know they did. They stuck me up in North Dakota. I was, I was supposed to have a base in Texas, and they stuck me in North Dakota. And uh, that was not the plan. It wasn't what I was told when I joined. I'd get one of eleven picks. I picked them all in Texas. They gave me a base in North Dakota. So how long am I going to put up with this crap? Not any longer than I have to. So back to the debate. Uh, as uh, it seemed like your life uh, really took a turn when you won that debate. You were on top of the world. You were going to be a lawyer, and then you went into the Air Force, and it all went wrong. But let's get back to the debate where you said Trump is a punk. So are you saying that you're going to vote for Joe Biden? Because we're only a month away now from, from this election. And I think that your audience hey, hey, guess is going to follow you with whoever hey, you vote you for. Don't, you don't even have All to decide right now. You don't even have to decide right now. If he takes a turn like Boris Johnson over there in England did, where in about three days he's in a hospital on a respirator, and Boris Johnson damn near died. It almost killed him. He was bragging about how he doesn't wear a mask. So will you vote for Pence? Well, yeah, I'd vote for Pence for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I like him. Uh, I'm not saying I don't. Uh, well, I guess I am. Well, I thought I you that. said to me before the show, you planned on running for president yourself. So I, I thought you weren't going to no, vote were, for either one of those were, people. There's, there's people that think that I should do that. And so Yandel said on the way here. Which party is thinks that? Uh, Republicans. Oh, 
Yeah. They want You're, you to run against the president. Yeah, they think it'd be interesting. They wow. love you because more than Trump. They've well, already picked him. You're going to have to run independent. Listen, he and I, I'll tell you the truth, he and I are both liars, but I don't lie like he does. I tell more of them like little white lies, you know, a little less than truthful, a spin on it. He flat out out and out lies. You know, when he says he didn't, he never, he's always up about the pandemic. He never tried to hide it. And then you got all these recordings of him saying he always tried to hide it. He still likes to try to hide it. I love the virus. I'm so happy that I have it. Did you plant the virus on Trump, Mr. Wendy, somehow? Uh, Well, you never know. I mean, when I sneeze, I don't worry about it. You know, I try to blow it as far as I can. Let's get that microphone removed out of here because... uh, I'm not sneezing over here. We don't need this mic. And we put that nice uh, mic cover. Is it ruined too? No. What's wrong with it? That mic cover. There ain't nothing wrong with me. Matter of fact. Mic cover is from the Major League Baseball. wrong with me is your stupid little green stick. I tell you that. I'm barely able to breathe right now. You still uh, sideways from it? Still trying to let my eyes quit watering. That would be nice. Yeah, we'll take another drink of that uh, punch. Mango punch. Mango punch. It's got a punch to it. Uh, so what What else you got planned for the show today, Mr. Uh, Wendy? I know we uh, man, normally do the... Uh, list too, you know. You're I, supposed I, to I do the five stories that are on your mind. I, I got to so, try uh, to remember, man. You don't know what they are. You can't right. remember. Where's the list? In the truck? No, it's on where, the... Where is, where's where's your list? I was writing on it. I was writing on it while I was communicating with them goons up there in Michigan. So I was writing down other things I was going to talk about. Okay, you had the five things. Here we go. Mr. Wendy's five things that are on his mind. Wait a minute. Off the top of your head. Okay. I was telling you, Yandel told me on the way in here, we should put you in Trump's position and ask you, since you're a Republican, the same questions they asked him and give you two minutes to answer. Okay, what do you think about replacing the Supreme Court judge? He had had a better one. Let me start that with that one. I like his better. Okay, Mr. Wendy, go ahead. You do whatever you want to do. He asked me. I said, all right, I'll play that. Okay, he said, okay, let me ask you and see how you do. First question he asked me, why should people trust you? And I started thinking about it. And I started thinking about it. And he says, we should play that Jeopardy music. because." And I thought about it for about a minute. And I, and I couldn't come up with an answer. So I was like, let me, how long do I have? He said, two minutes. Okay. So well, you were just bragging about your debating skills. And the first yeah, question. Yeah, but that's a good question. Why should people trust me? I, okay, what now should I that's say on the table. There's no reason to trust you, actually. Right, right, but I don't want to say that. So you have already been eliminated uh, before you even got. Out no, of the gate. I wasn't going to answer. First question, this president is done. Okay, let no. me ask you a question then. I'll be Wallace, Christopher Wallace, Biggie yeah. Smalls. Okay. And you be one of the presidential uh, debaters. Okay. No, he's will Mr. Wendy. You, will you condemn white supremacy? Uh, how about we condemn what they do? Is that a no, sir? Uh, 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 their actions. Their actions are condemned, Mo. But them as a group, I think, and of course the president's supposed to know, I think there's a thing in the Constitution of people's right to assemble, like any church. But what if they're assembling for hatred towards another race? Well, you saw where they did that before, and they probably still do it. Then people wearing the white Will you condemn racism in America and the Ku Klux Klan and the Proud Boys? I think condemns a little strong of a word. You know, <laughs> I would I would uh, definitely say them guys need to uh, clean their act up a little bit. What are you, some kind of? I'm just telling you, condemn. racist, Mister Wendy. No, I'm not a racist. I have a roommate when I was in the airport was a black guy. I, I know. Oh yeah, I got a friend that's black. Yeah, I have a friend that's black. Yeah, so you're not a racist. <laughs> have you ever dated a black woman? I've been out with one one time, and that's it. <laughs> you ever rolled around with one? I attempted to, and that was it. Why didn't you roll around? You know who would not cooperate. <laughs> was that well, well, why was that? Because of her. Because of why she just all I, all I remember was you know who saying to me, monkey, 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 monkey. You're getting ready to doink a monkey. And what? I, Are just, you crazy? No, I'm just telling you. That's what was going through your mind? That's terrible. No, the signal was being sent by you-know-who. And so, therefore, he said, <laughs> you can do whatever you want in your mind, but I ain't doing it. So, I, I, I made her get out and go to the beach and hunt some seashells while I had a What talk. were your parents teaching you when you were a child that had these 
terrible thoughts no. about African Americans going through your mind. I mean, that's really I was sick, from, really, I, Mr. I was Winter. from a small coastal town. And uh, it was one of them towns where your kids could just run around and do whatever. They, I could be gone for three or four days, and I, I wasn't in no trouble. Well, just go out you could be gone for three or four days, and your parents wouldn't be worried? My father would be pissed off. You know, he'd say, why, why, where would you go for three or four days as a young child and just leave your home? Me and my buddies like to go camping, so we can go camping and duck hunting and floundering all at the same time. But it's a long way Like when you were away. like nine or what? Like uh, I'm talking about 11, when you were a 11, kid. 11 and 12. Yeah. 10. 10 for sure. 11, 12. I got to be a teenager. Were there any adult campers with you? No, just me and my friends from school. Young boys. Are you sure there weren't any Boy Scouts of America? Hey, and we had shotguns. So, oh, so I'm, sh- I'm sure they were shooting so, their guns. Mr. No, no, we were killing seagulls. Tenuals. We were killing. Se- we killed 200 seagulls one day, 200 of them, and each one of them is a $200 fine. That's how mad I was, because I'm hunting ducks in a duck blind, and all of a sudden I feel something plop, and it feels like it's right on my forehead, right on. I, I well, I'm buddy. wondering where this gives you this awful taste in your mouth for a beautiful black woman that you were about ready to make love to. She was not what you think she was. She wasn't beautiful. Well, then why were you rolling around with her? That wasn't my idea. It was her idea. She was one of them ones. Dearest Abigail, I write to you with great longing and also because I lost your phone number. You see, I recently purchased a new phone and regretfully tried to transfer my data from my old phone myself. The horrors. Photos, notes, your number, all gone in a confusing flash. Why, oh why did I not use AT&T right to you? I could have bought online and an expert would have brought me my new phone and helped me transfer my data for free. I could be texting you hilarious gifts at this very moment, for AT&T Right To You can deliver as soon as today. Instead, I have delivered unto myself only misery. Also, I lost your mailing address in the data transfer, so I'm not sure why I'm even writing a letter. It's not complicated. Personal delivery, expert setup, all free. As soon as today, with AT&T right to you. Same-day delivery is subject to availability. Select areas only. Service provided by AT&T or an authorized provider. Visit att.com slash right to you for details and availability. Does it for money. Mm. Oh, now get, the story takes a real, real... Hey, and you know what? When I dropped her off, she still wanted her money. Yeah, of you course. Know, wasn't her fault. Of course, yeah. Wasn't her fault. It was time. There was time so spent. I had well, yeah, time spent. So uh, it's TSL. I gave her her. I gave her half of the money. I gave her half of it. I said, I'm not giving it all to you. I'll give you half of it. So time I'll, spent laying around. You can only get it up halfway. Sounds like. no. It didn't even do that. It didn't even do that. Yeah, no, it didn't do nothing like that. That son of a bitch was like, no way. You need to tie me to a stick, and it ain't gonna work. All right. So what else is on your mind, Mister Winnie? That's one thing you. Uh, I don't even know what you uh, brought you, up. You uh, did. Well, you said, yeah, we were going to talk about things that were on your mind, and uh, you, and you brought up the here debate. Go. Here goes your stupid stick again now. You get your mind wandering. Okay, yeah, what were we talking about? Let me hit that again. I'm oh, having an really idea. Sh- huh? It's your show, man. What else are you talking about? More, I'm I sitting here know. riveted by your program. Okay. What else waiting for the on? next thing. I think that we should, in light of the green stick, call, call on <laughs> True Leave to be a sponsor of Mr. Wendy. Yeah, we can Who's get that? the sales guy over there to make a phone call. True Leave is a company in town makes the green stick. R- in town? Well, a Florida company. Oh, ain't that something? They have outlets in our town. Well, we got to go wow. see Dr. Morris at Dr. Morris Medical Center, located at the Lee County Sports Complex. Hey, he's behind that stick right there? Yeah, you go in and tell him you got a little anxiety, you have a little trouble uh, falling asleep. And uh, Do you have here trouble in the sleeping? great state of Florida, no, they'll prescribe no. that to you. No, I That's haven't. way better than my pillow. Uh, you know, I'm usually, I, I make, I eat one time a day and that's at night, right before I'm ready to crash out. So I make every meal like Thanksgiving. I eat way too much on purpose. You barely breathe and then you fall right to sleep. Probably not healthy. That's one of the reasons you're fat. I know, I know, I know, but I'm not going to sit and eat all day. I don't want to eat right now. I didn't well, have eat you never breakfast. heard of three meals a day? I don't, I, like right now, I'm not hungry. I don't want to Five is better. You should force yourself. Drink Can't, a glass I, of that, water. Then you really get fat. No. Yeah. Eat yeah. some almonds. Uh, uh, do you uh, like nuts? Uh, uh, some of them. Do you like almonds? I love them. Do you like almonds, nuts? Oh. I don't know. He just got something in his mouth. He's a little choked up when you no, asked him I'm that. No, I'm trying to take a drink of so your, I can wash What, what is it again? Mango punch? Yeah. <laughs> what? Answer yeah. the question. What was it? Do you like almonds, nuts? 
Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Good one. Yeah. 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 It's about no, timing. No. Yeah. No. No. Messed up the I don't, timing. I don't. I don't like none of their nuts. Yeah, none. <laughs> wow. And then you're a little late on the sound effects, Charles. <laughs> So uh, what else is on uh, on your mind, Mr. Wendy? Like, what else is going on? Big weekend at the trailer park. I uh, know that you, I will say that Rhonda that runs around with that uh, golf cart, she, yeah. she is a, a hot number. Yeah. What is her role at the trailer park? Because, She's the general manager. Oh, she, she runs the whole place. I see her. She's always scooting around on that uh, yeah. golf cart, yeah. and she's keeping things in order over there at yeah. the Jones she Mobile me, Home Village. She gave me a ride. Yeah, yeah she's got day. a little liking for Charles, it seems like. I was walking down, coming back from the store. She said, it's too hot to be walking. Get on, I'll give you a ride. Well, she's a listener. I'm hanging on. I'm, yeah, she listens. She's a listener. Well, she's I know as you're running on empty and you're running low on cash, maybe uh, maybe you could start helping Rhonda out around the property. Maybe you could do a few things for her, cut down some trees, That's take out some I, trash. I'm going to do that, but I'm hoping that I can wait till the weather cools up a little bit. You I could just it's, did. I know, I know, but it don't last long. You said she listens to this show. Is yeah. you think she's listening now? I mean, is there something? Yeah. Well, is there something you'd like to say to Rhonda? Because she, she is a what a beautiful, bright ray of sunshine that Rhonda is. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. Have, only when I have to, I, will I do that? But I don't have to right now. I can go out to the docks and make more money if I have to. Which, depending on what I get for today, I may wind up having to do this weekend. Go out there and unload a couple of boats, and wind some cable, whatever, sew some nets, whatever somebody wants. When them boats come in, they don't like to stay and work on the boat. They want to get their money and they want to leave. So all the stuff they want done that they have to do, part of their job, they hire people on the docks to do. Didn't you say that Steve, uh, my buddy Steve that I know, I DJ at a party for him recently, yeah. Gala. He, yeah. You said he pulls some weight out there yeah, with he shrimp the, boats. He, he runs the fish house. So that's where their shrimp and the boats go. You think may, maybe uh, we could call him up? Maybe he's got a gig for you over there? Yeah, I could unload boats there. That's where the big, that's where good money's at. It's unloading the boats. About four people do that. So yeah, he could definitely get me on that. You think you could that. stay off that mango punch long enough to uh, put in an honest, uh, hard guys, day's work? Them guys are drinking beer while they're unloading the boat. Okay, well, yeah. then maybe this is the perfect gig for you. Well, well, uh, well I've done it before. It's hard, next it's week's hard show, work. I'll be reaching out to my friend Steve. It's a good way to lose weight because it's, it's a hard work. And see if we can get you uh, get you a gig over there. Got to lift up four 50-pound bags of shrimp and throw them up on this belt that takes them inside the place. So. And we, we encourage everybody that's listening to this Sometimes episode. One at a time. If you're listening to this episode of Running on Empty, tell your friends to listen because... We need to get more listeners on uh, Mr. Wendy's show. You've now been taken over by uh, Ready Sex Chat. There's a new show on the network that uh, it's beating. It's, I mean, it by a landslide last week. And what week. do they talk about on that show? It's a girl. She's a <laughs> she's a porn star. Oh yeah, uh, you're so in trouble. She just talks dirty. She she right. talks clean, I but could... about very dirty things. Oh oh, like a doctor. <laughs> She's telling you what you could. How no, you could she do. she doesn't say the the doctor words, but uh, when you say you're going to have to listen. Yeah, you'll have to listen to but her I show. I want to stop right there and ask Charles how people could listen to his show because I've heard there's some uh, well confusion. Which one, it, 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 it's on this one. Does that mean it's not on that one? It's no, it's on, on everything. Okay, well that's one of the things they were asking me. Which do I listen to it on? One time you send me a link that says the podcast playground. Next time you send me a link that says Apple. Which one is it? Uh, that's well, it's like. everywhere. To be honest with you, if you just type in, and I'm going to do it now just to confirm that it still works, but if you just go Mr. M-R, yeah. Wendy, W-I-N-D-Y, yeah. podcast. I mean, I can just type that in and hit search, and the first thing that comes up is the thepodcastplayground.com. The next thing is Apple. The next thing is Google. The next thing is Spotify. It's got it on uh, Amazon. You're all over the internet, so Mr. Look at the pictures do? of Mr. Wendy on the on the internet, you see him over here. Uh, look at all these pictures of you on the internet. I'm. Oh yeah. <laughs> look, but come around, come him. around. You got to come around this, this side. Off. Take it off, Mr. Windy Talking is becoming Gentry's a mic. real big star over here. So look, look what happens when I. You see me, Google Mr. Windy podcast. Yeah. All those pictures of you. Look at you. No, that's. Uh, <laughs> I got to look at them because some of them could be trouble. Uh, especially that one right there. This one right here. Oh, yeah, you see that? Yeah, you're uh, you're worldwide now. At this point, there's also a picture of you when you were in the Air Force. We can't hear you. Get to a mic. There is a uh, a picture of your logo for your show that uh, we had created. Have you ever seen the video, the tackle? The tackle. Oh yeah, you've you've yeah. told us about that yeah. one. The, the video of Mr. Wendy going viral as you're mowing the yard and oh yeah. man, hey, let's Blind grab that. Me. Let's grab that. Stupid. He's, he's takes stupid. you out. Yeah, yeah. And I got a live lawnmower in my hand. 
That thing could have swung around and swung around and chopped my foot off. Yeah, but it didn't. Yeah, because I, I did a face plant. I was more worried about holding on to the lawnmower. You once taught me about a great quote, Mr. Wendy, that I still use to this day, probably 15 years ago that you told me this. You cannot sail a ship yep. on yesterday's wind. Yeah, that's a true story. So why are you sitting here concerned about the old man coulda, shoulda, woulda? You're the last guy I would have thought would have been talking that kind of stuff. I, I, you know what? I ain't talking that. I just asked you if you saw it. Yeah, I seen it. I okay. seen it. Okay. But you well. then you had to say, he kind of killed me, that son of a bitch. So how do you listen to your podcast, Charles? Just go to MrWindy.com. That's me. wrong. No, that's not where you go, <laughs> MrWindy.com. You don't go to MrWindy.com. What did we just okay, tell Mr. the audience Wendy to do? Podcast.com. Google it. Just say no. Google it. Okay, Google it. Just say Google me, bitch. I'll okay. go ahead and say it so we can put it in the promo. Go ahead. Uh, Google me, bitch. <laughs> nice. All right. Now, how about a line like, hey, this is Mr. Wendy. Listen to my podcast. Anywhere you download your podcast, this is Running on Empty with Mr. Wendy. Go ahead. Wait a minute, man. Come uh, on. You hey, know what. this is Mr. Wendy. Listen to my podcast, Running on Empty with me, Mr. Wendy. I need people to listen to it so I make more money so I can get out of that goddamn trailer park. Okay, bye. That's pretty good, Mr. That was Wendy. Pretty very good. nice. That was very nice. nice. Work. Good work. Uh, so, Aren't yeah. you supposed to do these types of tasks? Hey, man, you know, I've got to tell you something right now that ain't me. It's hot in here. I what, can what are you talking it. about? The air conditioner ain't on, and it wasn't on the last time we came in here. The air conditioner is on. It's I'm like, starting to sweat in here. All right, well, we still got 20 minutes of the show. Maybe well, Jay can go turn the air down. Uh, he's going to go turn it things. It's, it's on. It's on like 73 right now. No, we're, we're in the studio with all the equipment with the door shut. Well, that's so it gets it, warmer okay, in here because okay. we've got a lot of broadcast same, gear in it here. It did the same thing last time. Remember, I blamed it on that light over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what else you got on your show, Mr. Wendy, that you can find by just Googling Mr. Wendy Podcast? Uh, see, I'm no computer whiz. Uh, you, I don't know. Uh, I you, don't, don't. you don't know what's going on? Well, I can tell you the, uh, the stock market has crashed thanks to the president yeah. getting COVID-19. And, and it's getting going to get worse. It could be an all-time record. They're, yeah. they're just getting open. They just open and it's already crashing. Yeah, the mar the market opened up and it's uh, it's taking quite a fall, about two and a half percent fall today. Got here a on. long ways to go too. Yeah, but I think uh, the good news is is that uh, we're going into the fourth quarter of the year. I think America is ready to get back to work. I think the president is going to be fine. But We've the coronavirus ain't going to let but listen. Him. The coronavirus was worse when it first came to the United States. It's coming again. And we know a lot more about it. We know how to yeah. treat it. We we know not to put people on ventilators right away and kill them. Hey, until we get a vaccine and now the uh, flu. Until we get a vaccine. Hey, and now the flu is coming around. A twin. Just take demic. care of Why yourself. Why are you doing that? Yeah, He's no. trying to get a picture of you. Why don't you turn the lights on in here so it ain't so dark? Uh, I'm trying to look at you because that'll that's give me... Flash. Oh, man, you're a big star. Another big picture of you on the interwebs uh, running on empty with Mr. Wendy. I am running on empty, too. I think the president will be fine. He's going to get the very best uh, health care. They're probably going to pump him full of they zinc. They gave Boris Johnson the very best health care, and he, damn it, if you remember seeing him when he was in that hospital bed, he was on a ventilator. Have you seen those Europeans' teeth? They they have one step above your teeth. They don't take care of themselves over there in Europe. Of course, uh, Boris hey. had to go with it. Those people do not take care of themselves, those Europeans, most of them. What are you taking a... Um, what are you doing, Yandel? He's, we got a photo a, shoot going on here. No, as, he's taking a picture of my fat gut. Yeah, well, now, why don't you uh, lay off some of that uh, tuna casserole? I guess I'm going to have to. What, what, what am I going to eat? A salad? I can't eat nothing but salads. You need to be plant-based. I've been eating skinless chicken. Yeah, how much of it? Well, I buy a six pack and it takes me two days to eat it. Six pack of uh, thighs. Six uh, pack cook, of thighs. Cook, cook, all, cook all six of them, eat three tonight and three tomorrow night. I just ate the last ones yesterday afternoon. So what do you got on uh, the agenda for this weekend? Oh, man, I got I to gotta make some money. So I got to probably call Jesse, see what he's got going on. You know, he'll tell me, yeah, come on out here. I'll find you something to do. What about something over there at the Weaver's Corner where you're living by the Jones Mobile Home Park? Uh, you said you're within walking distance of the of the Family Dollar. I've seen you over there a lot. What about it? Maybe you could get a job at the Family Dollar. What about the grocery store? One of those kind of jobs. We've talked about this. Yeah, yep. And uh, I don't trust that place because of all the people that are in there not wearing a mask. You, I wind up getting into arguments with people. If I'm going to wear one, you should wear one. Just, 
And they're everywhere. And there's a sign. You're, right wor- there. you're worried about the coronavirus that you could possibly die from it? No. Are you concerned? No, no, no. I just don't think people ought to be uh, ignoring the rules like that. There's a sign just like me and Yandel saw going into 7 Eleven. I said, uh oh, we don't got our masks. He said, oh, we don't got to have them. There's a sign right there on the He says, oh, there is a sign that says you got to have them. So there's one on that one too, but people ignore it just like we ignored it. Well, my decision was based on the two women behind the counter not wearing their masks. Right, so. right. Well, the guy in there at Family Dollar, he wears his. So does, so does the girl and the other one. They all do, except for some customers. There is some good news about your brother. Uh, I think maybe he's alive because the two big fires that were in California, like the biggest fires ever in the history, it looks like they've been contained. So uh, I don't know how they did that. It wasn't like that yesterday. Looks like it's getting better. So hopefully your brother's still Well, you know why? Alive. Because eventually it's going to burn everything. Once everything's burnt, there's nothing else to burn. So, And that's the houses, the trees, everything. People are getting caught trying to get away. So uh, that's a horrible. Uh, that's got to be a horrible way to die, burn to death. Yeah, because I drove through one of them one time in Colorado, me and my dog, and I started getting nervous because I'm getting too far in and there's no way to turn around. I finally run across a spot big enough to turn around. I had to get out of there because that fire was coming up the side of the mountain. And I was like, man, I could see where people get stuck out here fucking oops. Yeah, I can say fucking Yeah, you can, you can cuss I on forgot, this show. I forgot. We're not talking to them right now. Yeah. So, uh, but, in other news, uh, are you a fan of John Bon Jovi? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I like a lot, some of his songs, yeah. He's got a new album coming out titled uh, 2020 where he's tackling a lot of the things that uh, you know are going on in the world. W- one is called uh, Lower the Flag. That's about like all the mass shootings that we've seen. There's another one called Blood in the Water, uh, which is to uh, police uh, violence. Uh, or, or disinformation. You know how like the the Dupont company was polluting the water in West Virginia, and we're yeah. finding out these big corporations and in Michigan where they poisoned that river with lead. Yep. Yeah. yeah a lot of this uh, asbestos lead stuff that they yeah. did for so many years, yeah. killing us with. Uh, yeah. He he's got a song about that, uh, and he's got a new, new album coming out, and he talks about uh, uh, white privilege as well. Do you think uh, white privilege is a thing? Well, remember I told you about that song by Kid Rock where it says it makes him ashamed of being white. Uh, what's going on? And you listened to it, you heard him say it. Are you so, ashamed? Are you ashamed of being white? Hell no, I'm not ashamed of being white. You feel are good? You kidding me? You feel I'm, pretty good as a I'm white half, man. I'm half German and half English, you know, and that's on my father's side. On my mother's side, it's like. Uh, Lithuanian and Irish. Were your so, parents racist? Because uh, you know you have a you have a hint no, of lived, racism. No, in you, no, no. We lived in a town where there was very few minorities. A couple of Mexicans, to say it right, and uh, only one African American for about one year. And were you raised uh, not to respect uh, all no, people no, the no, same? No, I did not. The same thing I told you about before. When, when I was a kid, my parents let us do whatever we wanted. So, yeah, we could take off, go motorcycle. So you had, ride, you had to get your own, you had to find your own way, pretty much. Yeah, and I found that well, with buddies of mine. Yeah, take off, go crabbing for three days. Yeah, I was yeah. in trouble when I got back, but. You still keep in contact with any of your buddies from Connecticut? From Connecticut? This is in Texas. Okay, because you, yeah. you kind of erased the fact that you're from Connecticut. What That's about, where I was born. What, but you said you lived there till you were nine. Yeah, Did you so, make any friends? There? Oh yeah, I got lots of friends there. Yeah, I see them. I see them. Are I they at, from Connecticut? Well, yeah, they're there. They're dearest Abigail. I write to you with great longing, and also because I lost your phone number. You see, I recently purchased a new phone and regretfully tried to transfer my data from my old phone myself. The horrors, photos, notes, your number—all gone in a confusing flash. Why, oh, why did I not use AT and T right to you? I could have bought online and an expert would have brought me my new phone and helped me transfer my data for free. I could be texting you hilarious gifts at this very moment, for AT&T Right To You can deliver as soon as today. Instead, I have delivered unto myself only misery. Also, I lost your mailing address in the data transfer, so I'm not sure why I'm even writing a letter. It's not complicated. Personal delivery, expert setup, all free. As soon as today, with AT&T Right to You. Same-day delivery is subject to availability. Select areas only. Service provided by AT&T or an authorized provider. Visit att.com slash right to you for details and availability. That's there. Born there, too. What kind of things were you doing between zero and nine in Connecticut? Uh, Getting in trouble. I was a fire starter. Oh, yeah. you're that Connecticut arsonist. Hey, yeah, you, you would start I, a fire? Hey, you know what I couldn't figure out was you see farmers set their hayfield on fire, 
It's because they want the grass to burn because it adds fertilizer. Yeah. And uh, they do that at a certain time. I seem to have trouble figuring out when the certain time was. I would just start them on fire any old time. Over there on the hill? Not on the hill. No, no, no. The pin shop pond. There's a big hay field there. So you'd yeah. go down to the pond and you'd be an arsonist and, and start I, a fire. I got good at it, too. I took one of them little blue propane torches, and I went around there and start that thing on fire in about five different places. Then, here's where I make a mistake, is I come back to watch the big fire trucks come. They started noticing after a while that the same kid always seems to be around when we're fighting these fires. Uh, so they... Did you get in trouble? Oh, yeah. My own brother turned me in. Did my, you uh, my kill oldest, small my animals? Oldest, my oldest brother. Uh, no, they probably ran away. You ever rape yeah, a donkey? My oldest brother is the one who turned me in. Yeah. My mother told me to come out there in the garage. She wanted to look underneath this piece of carpet that was on the workbench. I wonder what she wants to look under there for. She's seen you in that donkey? She's, my brother told her about that blue propane torch. Mm. And it was under that carpet. You said you killed animals, right? You no, they run seagulls. off. Oh, yeah, seagulls. Yeah, they, they, they don't count. Yeah, because uh, yeah, one of them did his thing right on my forehead when I was hunting with uh, Scotty Willie, I think I was with that thing. Scotty Willie? Yeah. <laughs> one last question, Mr. Wendy. But did you wet the bed? Where? When you were a child. Uh, we all, I think, took a little leak in the bed at some point, didn't we? Uh, I'm talking about bed wetter. Oh, all the time, you know, consider all the, no. Like it became an issue maybe, sometimes? Yeah, no, maybe. No, oh, wait, a oh, hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. minute. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, wait when a minute. I was maybe six or seven That's years old. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Okay, and maybe once or twice. And I quickly got over that because when you are wetting the bed, it wakes you up. Yeah. It, it would wake me up. It ain't like I, some people, they wake up the next morning, didn't even know they pissed the bed. Okay, so two out of three but it would wake on me up. the list of are you a serial killer? Well, mm. well, oh, really? No, serial Sets kill fires, fish. Well, kills small animals. No, I don't. They run off. I never went back and saw what any about boats. the seagulls. Well, they had it coming. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. When you shoot a seagull down, they come flying in by the millions. We already so, found uh, out you're wanted by the and, law and in then, the state of Michigan. You, you ever feed the seagulls that's, alka that's, seltzer? That's where, you, that's where saying something to somebody. You know that ain't right. That bitch spit on me. So I said something to her for that. I could. I got friends who might tell me they would have knocked the fuck out of her. I'm, you know? I'm not so sure woman. we should be hanging around this guy, Yandel. He's no, probably, I, I, I he's probably wanted for something down here, too. He's, you say he checks all the boxes for being a serial killer? Not bedwetting. Yeah. He but, said he bedwet. But that's his word against ours. Yeah. So well, yeah. well, I think I know. Yeah, I, I think you don't know. You're comparing me to you. Are your parents living, Shaw? My dad is. My mom died in a car wreck when I was 17. That's sad. I'm let's sorry. Give your, let's give your dad a call. What's no, his number? No, let's not. We What's did his that. number? We did that one time. He changed his number. <laughs> I don't remember that call. Not I think here. we should try it not again. Not here on the show that we just called. I told him my dad has a very private number. You can't get the number. They said, give me his name. We'll let us see. So I gave him his name. And they should, found his number. They come back with a phone number and his name written on it. Give me his name. Probably Charles Gary Shaw. My, and my sister's listening. She'll say, Dad, he did it again. He gave out your name. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how you... That's I'll, okay. I can find it. Well, I'll tell you in the truck. I can't do it over the air because she's listening. And you don't you don't want uh, her to hear your daddy's name over the air? She's going to tell my dad that I did it again. You know, I gave out his full name. He has not... His, oh, he doesn't want anyone to know his no, identity. He, hey, hey, listen. When, when they showed up with that number, I didn't think it was the right number. So I told them, go ahead, dial it, and dial it. So we dial it live on the air, and a woman answers. And her name is Charlene. That's my father's wife after my mother got in that crash. And uh, so I said, hello, Charlene. She said, yes. And I looked at Alma. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, no. So I said, this is Charles. Is my dad around? Why, yes, he is. Well, I start talking to him, and then Alma starts talking. And he says, are we on the air right now? And I said, yeah. He said, God damn it, son of a bitch. I I don't want to be on the air. And so I'm going to pot him down. I said, okay, I'll talk to you. And yeah, he never liked that. Well, what if we just don't tell him he's on the air? You know, I just want to hear the two of you talk. You're not going to be able to get his number, I'm pretty sure. 
I'll, Man, this, this guy hey, is an omelet, enigma. If Omelette, who can't figure out how to no, Google the omelet, Mr. Wendy podcast to get omelet, his number. It wasn't Omelette who did it. It was somebody, one of the producers. It wasn't Omelette. They walked up to me while me and Omelette were on the air. And they said, here's the number. And I was like, well, that's some pretty good work there. And we called and sure enough, it was it. But when I tried to call it back about a week later, that number had been disconnected. So and when I talked to my brother, one of my brothers, he said, yeah, the old man thought that was pretty shitty that he ain't heard from you in 28 years. And then when he does hear from you, you got 100,000 people listening to what you and he are talking about. Because I was asking about my brothers who's still and what alive. if it was an episode of This Is Your Life? And he'd be mad still? Jerry Springer called him up? No, no, no. He, he No, he's... Uh, See, there's certain things I should have done that I didn't do. Like and what? Th- have kids. You well, were yeah, supposed so, to have kids? Isn't that up kids? to you? I was, I was expected to, just like everybody else in our family. Well, you and think they, they all did. You think you could me. still impregnate a woman? Maybe we could get uh, you I'm set up. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you donate uh, sperm? And you know what? I, I want to ask you something about that because I don't have a clue. How do they go about getting that? Video. Cup. Oh, you yeah, give you kidding. a little dirty magazine. Oh my God, you got to be kidding room. That's disgusting. I would never do that. Private room. It pays. I don't give a goddamn. You, you, know. you know how many women would want to well, if, buy they, your sperm? I don't. It doesn't matter. They're going to have to come in there and do it themselves. And I'm yeah, that's on... going to be the bit for next week. Uh, you know, we, we tried to do the gun range. Uh, let's see if you can shoot another. I don't gun. have ID on today either. You do have to have ID to donate sperm. Okay, so next Friday, bring your ID because before no, you co- you, know, you don't get paid. In. You don't get paid here from the station unless you fill up a cup. Fuck you. And you donate. Fuck you. Fuck All right, you. well, you don't get Fuck paid. You. Well, then, you listen, listen. Hey, you want to have a show you. here? Hey. I'm trying to build a show hey. here. Hey. I'm, I'm trying to make a winner. I'm in somebody else's fucking house. No, you are. You no, want to get I'm paid not. around Fuck here? You. Fuck you. You better put Fuck together you. some better radio because this listen. show we just did, it sucked. Fuck you. I don't give a goddamn. It's at a doctor's office. It's not somebody All you got to do is jerk off into a cup. No. Come on, man. Oh, man. That's disgusting. And Jay gets to be you there to fu- record yeah, it. Cool. Oh, yeah. Get the audio of you on that. Doing that. Yeah. No, no. See, he ain't Double doing fuck that. you. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Double ooh, fuck ooh, you. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, Will <laughs> you shit in the box and so we can have your to- colon DNA tested? No, I don't want to be I'm a part of that. I'm not doing that either. Uh, what about 23 and Me? What is that? Do you pee or do you get what blood? What is 23 and Me? Where you check your DNA to see oh, how much yeah. African ancestry. you are. Good. I'll do that. We'll do that. I already, I already know what, what about I am. Check your testosterone and see if you have low T. How do they do that? No, no, I don't. I already had that done. A lipid panel, they call that. Will you take a lie detector everything. test? Guess what? My prostate on a scale of one to four, mine is like a 1.3. Can you, can you get a... Uh, 1.3. Can you get a... Uh, and my doctor, <laughs> I, I told my doctor, I said, hey, I know what your prostate does, and I've heard of prostate cancer, and the scale is one to four. And I'm a 1.3. He just waves me up. He says, yeah, you're all right there. You're a 1.3? How did, how did 1. he find 3 out? out of how did he four. measure it? They, it's called a lipid panel. It's a test of everything. How your liver's doing, how your kidneys are doing. Your liver has got to be shot. No, my you numbers, drink. No, no. My and all that freaking frozen food you eat, all that no, uh, processed I got, listen, food. They say, your yeah, liver is no, a listen, glump you, of listen, fucking what, yeah, goo. Yeah, fucking, Not listen, to mention those you. weird drinks. Oh, hey. yeah. Four lo- I, dos locos or I, whatever that shit is you hey, drink. Hey, mango punch. My liver, my, yeah, oh my, God. my liver is made in Germany. And then people have <laughs> been drinking for thousands of years. That's what I thank on Thanksgiving. They say, what are you thankful for? And I say, my German-made liver. Your German-made liver. That's right. Because it, I put, like you said, I put it through hell. And my numbers went up a little bit because I was taking terbinamine, which is medicine for your toes. And that's what made it go up. But once I stopped taking that, and it went right back down. Well, I had the last checked. I said, well, I went up to 8, 44, 88, then 120. That's when they started getting worried. They figured out, is that medicine? Tried to blame it on drinking. Quit taking the medicine. Then it went down to 40-something. Which is below, that's on a scale of 0 to 60 is considered okay. And I was up to 120. So on next week's show, Mr. Wendy will be donating sperm. No, I'm not. You want to bet? Yeah, that's going to be better than you going like pissing no, then on you know what you, yeah, You know what you're going to do? You're going to get one of them pretty girls you was talking about. And I don't care what color she is because I'm going to put a blindfold over me. And I'm going to have some music and listen to music. And I don't know shit. 
I got an idea. What about one of those massage parlors? Like, why don't we uh, get you over there? One of those Asian massages. They call that a happy ending. They said, does that come with a happy ending when I, you get a massage? I couldn't believe how many of those. Your... Do they have those up in Michigan yes, like they do yes, down here? Yes. And have you been to one? I you... pulled up to one with the guy that I was working for. And he said, hey, you want to hear something funny? I said, sure. So we pull up to one of them. They actually have like a drive up window yeah. where you can talk from your car. So because you, uh, you don't come inside. And, uh, he tells her, how much for this? How much for that? That's 200 for this, 50 for that. He said, does that come with a happy ending? And she slammed the, she said, we don't do that here. And she slammed the window closed. I said, okay, so is a happy ending what I think it is? <laughs> He's laughing his ass off. Yup, it's just what you think it is. I know a few guys that frequent those places, and uh, it sounds like it's game on in, the, in there. And then when one of my buddies mentioned that to I've me. I've been to a Mexican whorehouse, man, when I was a teenager, so it ain't like I ain't never been to one before. I have been to them. And I picked the wrong motherfucker. You know, I picked a fat, ugly Mexican. I didn't know that the good-looking ones coming Why do you always get tangled up with the fat, ugly, smelly ones? And you can't perform because you're now entangled into a situation in which you can't be aroused. I did not know when I was in Papagayo's with my buddy Shannon and Bubba Barnes that the pretty girls come in later in the day. We're there drinking early in the morning. So I was already drunk probably by drinking wild turkey back in those days. By 10 or 11, I'm drunk, so I took one of them. That buddy you know what they call that, Mr. Wendy? It's called alcoholism. Yeah, well, so uh, guess what they call bank robbers? Bank robbers. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> what, what the fuck, well, What are you tell me God. something I don't know? So, but, so, so you, anyway. you, you uh, embrace your alcoholism. You think uh, you know, you're better off being on the booze because well, you were sober for a minute in your life. I remember communicating with you at this time. Yeah. Well, uh, what was life cut. like when you were sober? Uh, I guess good. You no, guess no, good. No, no, no. Was it wasn't where- good in this regard? I'll tell you why it wasn't good. Because when I quit drinking, I smoked more. When I quit smoking, I drank more. I tried doing both of them. And that's virtually impossible. You have to go land on the moon to do that. No, I, they got a thing on me in Michigan from when I was in Mancelona. They asked what my problem was, and I said, "No smokes, no, uh, no, yeah, no smokes, no booze, no nothing." Have you ever tried meditation? And stranded in Mancelona. Just, I think you need to just relax. Let well, this music hit you like you pretend that you're I'm, at the I'm, Asian massage. Give me that green stick, man. <laughs> Go to a commercial. <laughs> No, uh, the don't. show is really actually over. Would, thank God. I would want to, uh, you know. So we have a commercial not, coming. If you would stick around for that, uh, Mr. Wendy, tell the audience uh, so long, and then also make sure you thank Jay Farner and the fine folks at uh, Rocket Mortgage. Okay, well, thanks everybody for listening. I want to thank one of my sponsors, Jay Farner and Rocket Mortgage, and. What else is I supposed to say? You know, the interest rates are low and that they'll take care of you, yeah, you know, get yeah. you in the home of your dreams, those yeah, kind of things. Yeah. Go that, ahead. Well, no, no, you heard them. Yeah, they'll, they'll do that. They'll get you into the home of your dreams. Your interest rates will be low. Life is good with Rocket Mortgage. Give them a call today. Jay Farner, Rocket Mortgage. Right on. And uh, who else is on there, too? Uh, don't, don't confuse me like this. That's the only one right now. Yeah, we don't want to screw ourselves over like you did with the My Pillow guy. But you better make sure that you edit that because it sounded good. I, I, I'm barely getting over sweating in here, barely. And it's cold in here. That's actually, are you yeah. feeling better with the temperature? It must, be, it must be this hat. You know what? I bet it's this hat. Why don't you take it off? We don't have to wear our hats in the studio. Well, um, that's a good idea. That was a pretty good show, Mister Wendy. But uh, we better get some more. Oh lip. wait, now let me get the camera back. No, out. no, no. You're not taking pictures. Yeah, of take me. a picture so of this bald ass. I want head. everybody to know Charles is now taking his hat off in the studio. And it's, uh, I didn't wear my hat the last till you gave me this hat. It's kind of like a cross between uh, the cue ball on a pool table and a chia pet on the backside. <laughs> what a look. That's because of the fucking hat doing that, man. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure <laughs> if I looked <laughs> in, I'm, probably the, that's why I'm hot, because my head is hot. It is, too. And look at where you touch the hat with your hands. That's it right here where you're supposed to. What are you going to be doing? It's so dirty there. I never cleaned it with bleach. All I did was wash it in a sink with a little bit of laundry soap. I need to bleach it. It's a lot better than it was when you gave it to me. It was brown. All right. Tell everybody no, where not, they can listen to your podcast. And what's coming up for next week's show? Because, uh, you know, not doing it. I'm thinking this show might get canceled soon. Yeah, sure. Next week, we'll see what's going on with your lovely leader, Donald Trump. He could be take a turn for the worse. Then 
There's going to be countries that want to take land that are going to take it because, oh, trigger happy ain't around right now. Russia will take some. China will try to get Taiwan. Who knows what Iran will do? North Korea, who knows what they'll do? Be all, safe, everyone. All of a sudden, the big bad boy's in the hospital. And he ain't doing too good. Let's everybody riot worldwide. Trying to calm you down with this spiritual music. I, Let's I say a little prayer, Charles. Working, God bless our president. No. I hope he's, you know, can drink the bleach or whatever it's going to take. Hydrocloxychloroquine. Yeah, he says it's good. He says that it's going to miraculously disappear. The, the virus is going to disappear. So I guess he better hope it does before it gets him. Mr. Wendy's lab will disappear. We found out he's wanted by the law of Michigan. That was breaking news on today's That's show. That's for nothing. That's well, for saying something to somebody who spit on me. That's a felony when you spit on somebody. All I did was say something. Only if you have something knowingly. They, had her on, they got her on camera. At Time to place. go. The hey, show's over. They got her on like camera at that motel. Not consummated by a battery. They got her on camera at that motel. If I ever have to use the video, the guy Bob's got it waiting for me. Her spitting on me. Now she's going to lose her case right there. But you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the rap. I understand that. Pretend I'm, I can't eat Chinese food anymore, so you're playing Chinese Music? Music? You're drunk already. No, it ain't I'm even not. 10 a.m. I'm trying to get out of here and go have a